Hello, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. I hope you're having a great time and that you're having fun with family or friends. These are all the episodes from my How I Would Have Built Mike Bloomfield guitar series videos. It was a Harley Benton kit guitar and I put them all, I put it together and built a guitar and then I made a video series where I built a guitar. The guitar was a DIY kit from Toman, a Harley Benton kit guitar. And I turned it into a left-handed guitar, just like Mike Bloomfield's guitar. Now this is all the episodes put together into one video. And the reason why is because some of you might enjoy one really long video, while others might want to watch one episode at the time. Here is the guitar, just so you know which one I'm talking about. So, if you've already watched all those episodes, Thank you so much for watching them. It makes me really happy to know that people are enjoying the videos that I make. But if you're new here and you don't want to go back and have to skim through or watch the playlist that I've made, then here is one video with all the episodes in one long video. I hope you enjoy the video and I'll see you hopefully in the next year when we come back and start building new, fun, interesting things. Until then, stay awesome and cool. Merry Christmas and go and eat some great food and relax and enjoy your time now in the holidays. I've done some things to this guitar already. Like for instance, I've switched the nut around so that the lower E is on the opposite side so that I can play it. This is very simple to do on some guitars. On some guitars you'll have to make a new nut. On this guitar I just flipped it around. I've also put strips of electrical tape as fret marks. Those are some of the basic things that you can do to guitar just to get started. I've switched the tip around so it's now on this side so I can stand up and play the guitar with the strap. The next two things I've done are a little bit more advanced and what I've done is I've taken the electronics and I've pushed them through so they're in the cavity and I've switched around the output jack so it's no longer here but moved up here to where the tone is. That means that the cable won't stick out here in a weird angle where my arm is when I'm playing. It will stick down here and I can use an L-shaped plug-in to make it lie smoothly across the body and not be in the way. I can even tug it behind my guitar strap. These are very simple things to do, and they're also very simple to reverse. All I've basically done is put masking tape on the inside so that no dust will collect on the inside. All of these things I did before starting this video because they're very minor things that you can do very quickly and easy. And if you don't know anything about guitar building, you can do these things without any issues. In this video, however, I'm going to take the entire guitar apart and I'm going to reshape this horn to make it look more suitable for this guitar. Because if you look at Mike Bloomfield's guitar, it's a little bit weird and wonky how they've just cut straight in and made something that doesn't follow the aesthetics. And it's basically the way I would have done it if I was asked to do this for him. And that's why I've decided to make the guitar look like his guitar as much as I could. And that's also a little bit of the reasons why it's relict. I do like relicking guitars, so it's fun. And hopefully you'll think this is fun too. So let's just start taking all the parts off this guitar. First off, we have to remove everything which you've just seen me do. So here's the body without anything. If you have a neck that is glued in, it's a little bit more fiddly and a little bit more complicated, but it's not that bad. If you have a template for a Telecaster, you can use that. If you don't, you can make one by basically just taking the body you have and drawing around and making a new one. And then flipping it over the other way and you can line it up the other way. And make a mark for this here basically you see how it's flipped around now i feel like having the 
body a little bit off-centered will make this more look like it's supposed to be a left-handed guitar. So I'm pushing the template off-center a little bit, like this. And I'm taking a pen and I'm just marking out on the body where we're gonna cut. So as you can see right now, there's the carve that is, and here you can see the line for where it is. Now obviously for what I'm gonna do now, uh, you need a router. They're not that expensive and they're not that hard to get. And you don't need to buy a super expensive one. You don't need for small things and for your first router, you don't need to buy the most expensive one you can find. So I'm just gonna take a jigsaw and I'm gonna cut this out and I'm gonna stay a little bit on the outside of this line because a jigsaw's blade can wander a little bit like this and I don't wanna have to deal with that. So we are just gonna we're just gonna get to it, basically. There's no more to say about it than that. And we can already see how this is gonna be a nicer guitar than what happened to Mike Bloomfield. So let's just get the template, put it in the right place and clamp it down so that we can get the router and do what we have to do. There you can see the clamps. And here is the router. It has a bit in it with a bushing so it can go around and it looks pretty good the router isn't wide enough so i need to take the template off so i can go the rest of the way here we have the the body right now and don't worry we're going to do some cleanup and reshaping and it's going to look even better So it looks a little bit wonky right here and it goes in not really as far as you might want but we're gonna fix it don't worry okay so uh i didn't press recording i thought i did but i didn't what i did was i flipped the body over and i used another kind of bearing this one has the bearing on the other side and i just cleaned it up see now the way the horn looks and it's a it's not perfect yet but it will be soon and it looks a lot nicer so i'm just gonna take a file and I'm gonna use my Japanese saw file. And I'm just gonna make this here where the neck is gonna be. I'm just gonna make it fit a little bit better. And I'm gonna take the neck and I'm gonna put it back in. And I'm not gonna do anything with the neck in place. I'm just gonna feel how it is. Because on the, on the other side here, the transition is, is good. But here it's a little bit rough, so I'm gonna take the neck out. So here is my orbital spinner. So I just gotta put this one in. And then we can start it. And it spins and it moves up and down, making sounding very nice. And you just move back and forth and you just keep on moving. You never hold it still. Slowly move it back and forth. And as you can see, it looks really nice there right now. So I'll take the neck and I'll fit it into the body. And as you can hopefully see, it is almost perfect. We need to sand a little bit more. So just sand a very little amount, put it back in. Need to take off more up here and just go back and forth tiny little gap there right there it's just it's so little that we need to get it so just put the neck side and there we have it now it's completely gone so we're gonna just move on to shaping the rest of the horn and I want to make sure to sand this place here so I get a nice even transition between all the faces because right here the, the way the body looked before is meeting the way the body's going to look now. So spend extra time right there. Yeah. 
I'll just take the finer side of my rasp and I'll just just remove a little bit and just look at the profile like what does it look like does it look okay so something like that and now we'll walk on to the next step but you could obviously make any shape you want here I'm just going for how I think I actually would have done it because I call this how I would have built my Bloomfields guitar so this is what I actually would have done but you could have any shape you want you could go down in some other way here you could have just gone in like this and then gone straight down and made a tiny little round over uh, if anyone is doing something like this watching this video please let me know how you want to do it and I'd love to see pictures of the end result because I think it's fun so I'm just gonna sand a little bit more because I can see right now that this goes to about there but this goes about there so I need to move this in a little bit to make it make a little bit more sense so I'll be back super soon okay so it's time to do the round over I have a round over bit in the router and I'm gonna hold it up and I'm gonna move it up to somewhere where the body is already rounded over and make a perfect match and then I'm gonna lock it in place and then I'm gonna move it over here and I'm just gonna start the router and you can see already how much nicer it looks it's not perfect and so we need to take file and we need to blend out some of the tiny little imperfections that will show up like the lip of the lacquer here and this little bump here because where the neck plate is going to go and I can also use it to round over this side here something like that it's really nice and now we just flip the body over and we do the same thing to the front okay so here's the body right now I haven't screwed it in place so it might be a little bit difficult to see but as you can hopefully see it looks sort of symmetrical but if you look really close this horn is a little bit further down now we're gonna have to talk about the fact that you have open wood here and thing is for me it's gonna be super easy because I painted this guitar so I have the paint that I used I can just go in and color it in I've shown you before how to spray paint so you can go back and look at those videos if you're curious but I want to talk about how to find paint. Some finishes you're not going to be able to find. It's like too difficult. You're going to have to like make them yourself. If for example you would have let's say a Silver Sky Nebula, which is a guitar I don't think you should cut up, mostly because it's going to be a very expensive guitar one day. And also because it's going to be really difficult for you to find that paint. You're going to have to go to a specialist that works with those kinds of paints and basically have them to match the colors you can go to basically any paint store and get color matches if you just bring your guitar body with you and say hey can you help me with this it's not that difficult it's only a problem when it comes to really really unique special colors like for example the nebula on the silver sky but for example a a milk white or a eggshell white or you know candy apple red it's gonna be easy it's gonna cost a little bit of money you can also just look at the spray cans that exist in hardware stores that are they come without being matched to any color they might look close enough uh, you could make it into a feature it sort of depends on how you design this horn I'm gonna just paint this now. Here I have a dowel, the kind that you use to hang up curtains. And I've cut a tiny piece out to make a little plug. And now I'm just gonna begin with drilling this hole so it's big enough for this to fit in. The reason why I'm enlarging this is because there is a little bit of paint and sanding sealer on the inside and I want a as close uh, bond between wood as possible. So let's just drill this out really quick now. 
Okay, so here I have the body and here I have the hole. And now I'm just gonna pour some wood glue all around. And I, I don't really care if, there, if it's messy because we're gonna do a lot of fixing up work soon anyway. And just put some in the hole as well. And since we're gonna, you know, plug up both ends of this hole, it doesn't matter if glue drips in to the cavity. And now I'm just gonna tap it in. And I'm using a rubber mallet because I don't want to make weird marks or to crack anything or anything. And I'm hammering very lightly. I put almost no force at all. I let the weight of the hammer do the work. And you leave it at something like this. I, it sticks out about maybe a half centimeter or something. And that's because the body is round and so we're gonna take off more here than in the middle. And so now, I hope you can see, we're just gonna leave that to dry. We're gonna take a tiny little piece of wood and just stick in these holes as well. But the hole is plugged. I've written a tiny little message on a piece of paper and I'm rolling it up as a hidden little message and I'm putting it in to this hole here as a secret little hide thing. It's fun, you should do that to all your guitars that you built. I once, for example, built the guitar for a death metal guitarist and I put a pentagram in the neck heel uh, hidden away just as a fun little thing. He never knew about it, so yeah. I don't think he's watching my videos, so it'll be a little secret between between you and me. Okay, so while this glue here is drying, we are gonna cut a lip on this body to plug up the hole. And I'm gonna use my router, and I hope you can see that I have a special bit in. And what this means is that this bearing here will ride on the inside of the cavity and cut a lip. You'll see very soon when I do it. These bits are People are talking about them being extra dangerous. I think that if you're just careful and you know what you're doing and you're going slowly, you won't have any issues. Don't jump straight in. Don't, don't push this up against the surface you want to cut. Go slowly in and go many times and work yourself up to where the bearing is up to the edge. And just make sure to measure everything. I already have a thin piece of wood here that I'm gonna use for the plug. So, I am gonna move the bearing up to where the blade is super close to cutting into the wood, like so, and I'm gonna lock it off. And this is gonna be my zero. And then I'm gonna move my stop and pinch the wood in between. And by pinching the wood, which I don't know, it's like pitching a tent or something, I don't know. Sounds stupid when I say it, then I know how much far down I need to go because I can't move more than that. And so now I'm just going to put on ear protection and I'm just going to route this out and I'll talk to you in a second and hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm doing. One thing that I forgot to mention was that I put tape on the other side of my router and as you can see it took some damage and that's because you really don't want to mess up your lacquer. And as you can see, it's a little bit messy right now, but nothing that you can't buff out. I also have forgot that I obviously have this cavity here. So I got a little bit of a mess right here, but don't worry, we'll fix all of this. It's not a problem. We're gonna take a measurement like this, and we're gonna transfer it to our piece of wood, like this. And we'll just put that down in three places, like this. And then we are also going to take a measurement like this. It's almost... Yeah, this one doesn't go that far. We're going to have to switch. We're going to do it like this instead. We can just hold this in place, like so. And we're going to make a mark here. And we're going to go a little bit further. Uh, now we can just take and make these lines fit together. And we'll just take a saw and cut this out, what we've drawn. And it should 
fit over this and we'll have to work in this weird shape. So I'll be right back. So I cut out the piece and I just rounded it over and uh, shaped it to fit as close as possible. If you don't have a little bit of mistakes like I have here, this will be super easy and fast. I had to go in and do some minor changes so it won't fit perfectly as you might see, but it really doesn't matter and you'll understand soon. But first I need to just put some wood glue down and glue in this little piece of wood. So I'm just, I'm just gonna press out some wood glue uh, like this and then I'm just gonna take a stick and smear it around a little bit. Trying to get it up on the walls as well. And then I'll take my piece of wood and I just press it into place. Since it's a little bit unevenly shaped, it needs to go in at a certain angle, which is this way, like so. And it's a very snug fit, but it's okay. And it sits a little bit under, which you'll understand real soon. I'm just gonna tap it into place. And now we're gonna have to wait for this to dry, but before we leave it alone completely, I'm gonna take a knife or a razor blade or any tool and I'm just gonna destroy the edge of the paint here. And you might be like, why are you doing that? What the hell is going on with you? Are you crazy? And no, I'm not crazy. It's everyone else who's crazy. No, I'm joking. Uh, the reason why I'm doing this is because if you don't, you'll have a perfect edge, sharp angle. And when all the lacquer and everything on your guitar afterwards, when you're finished with the guitar, has dried and gassed off and you're going to polish it, later down the line, at some point, you will see these lines here. If you've seen my video where I made a SG guitar that was right-handed into a left-handed guitar, that guitar, it's, a, it's still a perfectly fine and awesome guitar and I love it, but the lacquer in this edge here has sunken in and it's just, you faintly see it. It's not something you see when I'm playing the guitar on stage or anything like that, but if you hold the guitar and you look at it, you can find the cavity that I removed. And it's just because you have this edge and we just need to break this edge up and make it disappear, basically. Because if we don't have a sharp edge, then there won't be a sharp edge to appear on the body. So, by just randomly breaking it, it won't be as visible for the eye to find later. So, even though it may look kind of like I'm destroying this guitar right now and I understand if some of you feel like oh god he is completely mad uh, please just trust me and keep watching and you'll see later I hope this makes sense if it doesn't make sense in the next video we're gonna work on the neck and we're gonna use the same principle there and you're gonna get to see it there as well I'm just trying to, to basically remove the lacquer and get down to the sanding sealer under and just scrape away and make a somewhat mess of this. And so now I'm just gonna leave this to dry according to my glue and I'll be back real soon. Okay, so I'm getting ready to lacquer this body. It's in there good and everything but if I put lacquer directly on the wood then the wood will soak up the lacquer and uh, I'll get this weird texture thing and it won't look like the rest of the body and so we have to put sanding sealer on it now depending on where you live sanding sealer can be kind of difficult to get and so what you can do is you can take the actual lacquer that you're gonna put on and you can thin it out in a cup with some spirit if you're using a spirit based lacquer which we are doing because this is an old vintage guitar and then you can just 
put that there and hopefully not spill a little bit. But as long as you dry it off immediately, it won't cause issues. And then we can just move this along so that it covers where we have. And this is a very thin layer of lacquer now. And so it will soak up real quickly. And then just, you have some working time when it's this thin. So don't worry too much. Uh, you really don't want to spill a bunch of lacquer like I just did. So maybe be a little bit more careful and don't look into the camera while you're pouring something on a surface. Actually look at what you're doing. That's my biggest tip for today, I suppose, uh, because that was stupid of me. Anyway, so it's gonna take a while for this to, to dry up and I have a little bit to clean up. And I'll be back real soon when this is sunken in. Okay, so after you've left this to sink in, and as you can see now, it is sunken in. It's still a little bit wet, so I'm not gonna touch it. But as you saw just a couple of seconds ago, I basically flooded it. And that's how much it will sink in. Like, there is no real end to it. Uh, now we're gonna lacquer it. And you can go about doing this in a lot of different ways. You can mask off the entire body, put a paper over here and a paper over it, spray paint over it. Uh, you can do like I'm gonna do right now, which works on this guitar because I have the lacquers and I have them in cans because you put the lacquer into a spray gun and shoot it. So I can actually paint it on and so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna... and this obviously depends on what kind of lacquer you're using and what color you're using and you should always match everything with your body so if you're doing something different than what I am then you have to think about those kinds of those kinds of things. I am basically I'm just fixing a guitar I've already made. You might ask yourself well this is very white and your guitar isn't the same color that's because I this is an old well no it's not an old but this is supposed to be an old guitar so what happens is actually the paint doesn't yellow it's the clear coat over that yellows and so I've put on a yellowing clear coat and we're still gonna have to clear coat this so we're not over yet or it's not over yet or yeah and the thing is you can actually put a decent amount of finish on more than you would if the body was spray paint because this surface is leveled and it's not gonna move so yeah and now I'm just gonna leave this to dry and I'm gonna coat it again because there is a little bit of weirdness going on. So I'm gonna do it twice. And I'll be right back once I've left this to dry for a couple of hours and then put on a second coat. Okay, so now the guitar has been left to dry for about a week actually, I think. And so the lacquer is all nice. I had to do that because I had to put a couple of layers on because the plug I made was a little bit too low. Maybe you saw that in the earlier clips. So I had to put about four coats of paint. I only wanted to put two, but I had to put four. But anyway, everything is really nice and smooth now and it looks the way it's supposed to do. But now we have to sand this area and make it nice and even and flat and perfect. And after that, will be able to put on the clear coat and we're going to try to do our best to match up the clear coat and the coloring and make sure that it looks like well not new which is what i was about to say but look like it fits together with the rest and it's going to be a little bit hard because if you look back at on, on how it looked before and if you look at the body right here you will actually see that i have more than one tone because I put one kind of yellow here and then I made it a lighter yellow till here where it's white. So we're gonna have to try to make a similar shade because I did that down here as well. And it's just because of how lacquer age and I wanna make this look uh, the right way, basically. And there is a lot to say about trying to match up. I did my best to try to make this guitar seem like a guitar I had, hadn't had built, but obviously I didn't want to take apart an actual guitar from the 60s. So, yes. 
let's just start sanding this and I'm gonna go to a thousand grit because I don't really need anything lower than that so here's the body now and I've sanded it and everything here I have my lacquer and it's a mixture now because we need to make everything work together and so in this mixture here I have lacquer I have a stain that is spirit based stain, and I have a little bit of spirit it's a little bit thick so I'm gonna put a tiny bit of spirit because you have to mix it you should make a couple of try pieces and see what happens and basically experiment with different layers to see if you can find the right color when you're doing this to a guitar that you haven't painted yourself and so you can um, match the colors so I'm putting this on and I'm moving it about and I have to move it up to the end of the body because if you look at the surrounding area of the body and the the way it looked on his guitar you'll see that he has a edge of whiteness surrounding which is basically that the clear coat has faded away and so I'm just gonna put this out here and move it about and get it a little bit uneven and things like so I don't know how well it turns out on the camera and now I'm just gonna leave this to dry and we'll be back real soon this will dry pretty quick it will take a couple of hours but it will dry pretty quick because there isn't that much lacquer in it and there's a lot of spirit and the spirit will oxidize or whatever you call it and disappear and so then we can work on the next level and the way I've done it on this body in different places is I've had different amount of stain so that for example here where when it was a right-handed guitar it would have been sanded down by his arm moving I've done it a lighter coat to make it seem more faded while here it's a darker coat I don't know how well those details show up on the camera but basically that's the way it is and you can brush on lacquer obviously when you're making a guitar that is supposed to look like it's been damaged you can get away with a lot of things that you might not do if you're trying to do this to a guitar that is new but you can actually brush on lacquer and let it even itself out by being on a flat surface that is leveled which this guitar is on right now so this surface is gonna flatten itself out and once all the clear coat layers that I'm gonna put on have dried completely and harden and done their thing I'm gonna sand and level the area and then we're gonna buff it this is the standard things if you've seen any of my other guitar building videos you see me do this a bunch of times so we're not gonna go over it but you can do that in just a spot you can you know sand a spot where you've fixed something and you can level it and buff it and you don't need any special tools to do it obviously there are tools that make it easier and that makes it better but you can do it the way I do in my videos. So anyway, I'm gonna turn off the camera right now and leave it at this place. But just think about what kind of paints you have on the body and what kind of paints you have to match it up. And if you're using spray cans, you can spray the paint into a bucket like this and you can put some spirit in it to make it easier to float and you can brush with it. Even if you find the paint you need in a spray can, you don't need to use a spray can. It's easier because it's easier to get a nice smooth leveled surface with spray cans than it is to brush on. But you don't have to if it's not a possibility for you. Hello and welcome back to part three of the how I would build Mike Bloomfield's guitar. And in today's video, we're gonna focus on the fret marks. If you have a right-handed guitar, you'll see the dots, but if you flip it over, there will be no dots because they're on the wrong side. One way that you can do this that is very simple and that will work somewhat at least, is you can put tape where the fret marks are. And unless you play a lot with your thumb over where it might grab, it will hold up for a while at least. But let's take this tape away and do something a little bit more permanent that is a actual real solution. And let's also make this neck look nice by removing the dots on this side. And I'm gonna show you how I do it. You can just drill holes with a bit that is the same size and plug them up but you'll have tiny little perfect circles that are very easy to see and so the way I do it makes it a little bit harder to spot where they are hopefully so let's get right into it okay so instead of drilling these holes out 
I'll take a super tiny little chisel. It looks like a U. And what I do is I dig in and I just create a small groove right here. And I chip away at it. And I try to make it look a little bit wonky and asymmetrical and off basically. And just do that to all of them. And I'll show you another one. I just go in, I cut in, and that one is a little bit too long, but that's okay. And then I turn it around and I'll just cut a little bit more. And the point here really is that if you make the shape a little bit weird, when we go to fill it up, no one will think about where the round lines are because there are no round lines. It's just a weird, unsymmetrical shape. I really hope you can see what it looks like. It looks almost like a piece of wood have been shipped out. And so try to just make it look a little bit, almost like you've chipped out actually, is a good way to think of it. And so I'll just go over all of this and I'll be back in a second. Okay, so the next step is to fill this mark here. And obviously, depending on the color of your fretboard, you're gonna have to color match it differently. And you can use a bunch of things. You can use powder, you can use a pencil, you can use basically anything. And I'm just using a razor blade and I'm scraping and I'm trying to get the scrapings to fall down into this little cavity that I've made and fill it up like so. And then I'm just taking some super glue and I'm just gonna put a couple of drops there. Move it around with my razor blade so that it doesn't go everywhere because I only want it where I want it. And it might look a little bit sloppy and weird right now, but don't worry, we can clean this up. And so, hopefully you can see it's starting to disappear. It's not really gone yet, but we just keep on adding more and more black powder until we basically just plug up the hole. And if we go a little bit over, so we have a bump of super glue and color pigment, we can level it afterwards. So I'm just going to leave it like that. It sticks up a little bit, but I'm going to have to wait a couple of seconds for it to dry. And then I'm going to do the next holes. And once I've filled all of them, we'll come back to it and level it and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so here we have one of the places where I've matched up the wood with the paint and the glue. And so now I'm just going to take my scraper. You can use a razor blade if you don't have one of these. It doesn't matter. And I'm just going to lightly start leveling this out. And you're just going to have to go back and forth and and level it out. So you see how I mean you can you can see a little bit of it left but I'm not I'm not done with it yet. You see how it almost immediately disappeared. And so if I just work on it a little bit more a couple of strokes even everything out and unless you know that a mark was there you can't really see it because the asymmetrical shape makes you not think of it and so I've done it all the way down here now and once I put the finish back over again it's gonna look really good back here I had a, did it a little bit bad and I got a little spill here so I had to I'm gonna have to fix this that's why it's the light wood is showing through okay so I've put masking tape on and I've squared up to the frets and the back of the fret so that I can take measurements and um, trace things out so I start out by measuring between the frets with callips and I try my very best to make it even 
then I divide it by half and I will make a tiny little mark and I'll move it over to the other side and I'll make a mark and if they line up on the same place I know that I've found the middle and then use the underside of the collapse where this thing here sticks out to get a measurement of the fretboard uh, let's see if can I make you see what I'm doing line it up to the line and then I can see what it says and then I can divide it and once I'm happy I can make see if you can see what I'm doing it's kind of hard to show once I'm happy I'll make a mark like so and so I have the middle of both and now I can take an all and I can press it in there where I've made the mark and because I use an all it will be transferred into the wood you didn't see what I was doing come on camera please and once I've found where I want to drill I can just use an all to make a mark and because I've pressured it into the wood it will be easier to drill and so I'm just gonna measure all of these out and I'll be back to you real soon on the 12th fret you're supposed to have two dots and so you can measure out the middle and then divide both halves and get perfect middles or you can decide a measurement from the edges of the frets inward basically it's just a question of how you want to do it as long as you do the same thing on both sides this mark here and this mark here it will look nice now I'm gonna drill out the hole I line it up with the mark I've made and so it won't wander I tr hold the neck as straight as I can and the drill is straight as I can and I just go down about a mill into the fretboard not more at all and it's kind of hard to see maybe but that hole is super small okay so the holes have been drilled and now I'm gonna show you a super simple way of doing inlays that is probably the most simple way you can do this and it's also super fast buy epoxy clay and just make a little bead and press it into these holes roll off the excess and just keep on rolling and keep on pressing it in and just remove the excess it's so easy you basically don't even have to use two hands and once it's hardened which is the only thing that takes time you can just lightly sand or scrape the surface and you'll get super flush nice looking little beads that's a super simple way of doing it okay so here's the neck now and if you look at this edge I don't know how to focus but at least at first glance you wouldn't expect there to have been fret marks and that's good I'm gonna put finish on the side again it's basically just a brush in some lacquer and just moving it up uh, doing my best not to get it on the front but knowing me I most definitely will get it on the front okay so a tiny little recap on his guitar obviously they didn't cut the horn the way I did that's the whole point of the series of videos so if I put this pick guard on roughly this is the way it would look and the way they solved it here was that they measured out the same distance that you have around here and they just cut a weird little nudge like this and you could definitely do that uh, again take the steps that I'm showing you and apply them to the kind of guitar you have and the amount of work you're willing to do 
I am now at the stage where I'm making things to hide the fact that this was once a right-handed guitar. So that's what I'm sort of hoping to achieve. You have the control plate here, and it would have been sitting somewhat like this. Actually, most likely more like that. And obviously the reason why we're moving that is because the knobs would be in the way. And so we want to flip it over here. And the way we could find these metal parts that you get from Harley Benton are so cheap that you can bend them. I don't know if you can see it, but it's like... Like my Fender Telecaster, I would not be able to do that. I'm sorry. Um, never mind. I'm getting off track. Sorry. The way I'm going to figure out where this goes is actually kind of simple. Uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this pickguard over and I'm going to match it up the other way around because I still want a connection where this cavity is. So I think that will make it very easy for me to find a placement and I'm going to put it so it's a little bit straighter. Something like that maybe. Seems good to me. You could measure out a center line and measure the distance, but I'm gonna eyeball it. You could also just put it like to the side like this or something. That could be cool. Actually, I kind of like that. Hmm. I'm actually gonna, I actually think I'm gonna do that. I think that that could make this guitar cool. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna sidetrack from what my initial idea was and I'm gonna put it a little bit on the side just because I like how this looks. I'm using an awl. It's basically just a fat needle that you can poke holes with. And I'm doing my best to center punch a little tiny mark where the two end screws for this plate will go. And now I have those marks and I know where to drill. But we're not gonna drill, not yet. First, we're gonna do some other measurements because we need to establish some some points so we're gonna put a piece of masking tape and we're gonna put it over these two dents and I'm gonna look for them and so I poke through the tape where I want the plate to sit I'm gonna double check it because tiny little dents are not that hard to fix but filling an entire cavity might be a little bit annoying. And as long as you don't poke too far down and really dig in, you usually don't have to worry that much. I'm gonna put two more pieces of tape down, one on each side of this. And that's just because my tape is a little bit thin. I don't have any thicker tape at the moment. Okay, so here's the body. I've pinned it down with two screws. They're just a little bit over the, the surface. You can see like that. And it's just to hold this in place so that I can do some measurements. And first off, I'm gonna take a pen and draw around the outside here. Just letting the pen ride against the edge of the plate. And that's why we have the masking tape, because we don't, we don't want to have problem. Then I'm going to do a circle for all the holes. Basically just transferring everything. And then I'm going to do some measurements. I'm going to take this and hold it up to the edge. And I'm going to try to figure out where the middle between this hole here and this area is. And I can see here that if I go a little past one centimeter, like somewhere here, I'll be good on that side. And then I do the same thing here. A little bit past one centimeter is somewhere around here. I'm eyeballing it because I don't necessarily need it to be any closer. 
And you could definitely do this on a scrap piece of wood and make a template. And then you can do it again. But I'm going to show you how to do this without a template because maybe some of you don't have the luxury of a template. And now I can use, I can line this up because I know this is square. I can line this up with the border here and I can I can move those lines across the drawing like so and now I know that I have enough wood here for the screw to go into and not chip out and so now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna add a lip because obviously we can't cut to this edge here this pen is about a mil and it's on the outside of the plate so if we cut on this line and made a, a cavity here the entire plate would just fall in so we need to maybe make it about three mils so i'm adding a little mark there and i'm adding a little mark there and now I can connect these lines and I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side okay so what I've done is that I've measured out a lip around and I've rounded it over a little bit I've also measured out a point for me to drill and the way I did that is I took the radius of the drill bit that I'm gonna use to find the center of it and so now I can just take an all and I can make a mark to help guide and I'm just gonna drill a bunch of holes here to make a bunch of relief cuts. And then I'm gonna use my router to clean it up. And the way I do when I wanna make a cavity like this, I already have a video on freestyle routing. So if you wanna see more about that, you can watch that video. But essentially, I'm gonna go down maybe five mils or uh, six mils something like that somewhere around there may maybe seven but not much more than that five to seven millimeters down into the body and just make a super tiny little cavity and I'm gonna spend uh, some extra time making sure that I'm really happy with that cavity and that I'm really following these lines that I've made for myself and that I'm happy with it and then I'm gonna use that cavity as basically like a ride along, like a built-in template. Here is a bit, the kind that I'm gonna use in, in doing what I'm doing. And basically this part here is gonna plunge in to the body. So if this is the edge of the wood, basically it's gonna get pushed into it like this, and then it's gonna spin and it's gonna cut it away. And I'm gonna make it cavity that is big enough for this little wheel that is on here, that is the bearing. and these cutters work that way that this bearing will run along an edge and everything underneath will be cut away. That's how guitar templates work. And so by cutting out this cavity enough so that this bearing can ride on the inside, I will clean it all up and make a hole that looks perfect. I've put a bunch of masking tape on the body, which I hope you can see. And it's to protect the body so that it doesn't get damaged or dinged or anything like that. Because let's remember that we're pretending like this is an actual expensive nice guitar and not a kit guitar that I've painted. I would obviously be even more careful if this was a actual expensive guitar. But I'm trying to show you the steps I would take. I'm going to go and do a bunch of drilling for these holes and then I'm gonna clean it up and I'll be back real soon because I feel like I've filmed a bunch of drilling and routing and I don't think you need to see that now because it's not that exciting to see as long as you know what it is I'm gonna do and also just remember do all these things slowly and take your time and try not to stress out about it too much and also just measure how far you go you should leave about maybe eight millimeters in the bottom. Okay, so here's the cavity now. I made it a little bit deeper than before because at some point I'm gonna upgrade to 
a bigger switch and bigger pots and you know things like that and so I'm gonna need a little bit extra depth but that's you know yeah now we can just remove the tape and uh, go on to the next step There's a little bit of residue here, so I'm gonna have to do a little bit of cleanup. But it's just, you know, a little bit of lukewarm water and maybe some soap or something. I don't know. Okay, so here's the cavity and I could just locate the marks that I made and I could hold it up to the place. And if I look around, there are no gaps. Okay, so now we're gonna drill a hole on the side here where the output jack is gonna be. And first, I'm just gonna try to decide where I want the hole. And so I'm just gonna hold this up here and I'm gonna do a mark. I like to try to put everything in some sort of line so that like, oh, it goes through. So I will have the switch, the two knobs and the output jack all in a, in somewhat of a, close direction but I feel like this is a little bit more than I want so I'm gonna move it over a little bit like this and I have masking tape on the underside and I'm just gonna make a mark like this and then I'm just measuring the thickness and dividing it by half and I'm making a mark with my pen and I'm double checking it so in between those two and then i'll take an all and i'll make a mark like that now i know where to drill i'm not going to start out by drilling a tiny little pilot hole so i'll center this up and i'll look down the body it's a little bit difficult for you guys but i'm trying to make a straight line and i start drilling and it's good to look down this direction too because you don't want to go in in a weird angle something like that and now we can just enlarge this hole until it's the right size okay I'm gonna try to show you here now I drilled a hole into the cavity like this that's for the wires then I enlarged the hole and when I enlarged the hole I'm going with the flatness of the body because the jack is gonna sit right out it's not going in any weird angle because it's sitting on a flat piece of metal. So then I go in straight like this. And so I don't know if you can see that in the hole, I basically have like two cavities. I have that tiny mark you see there, and then I have the hole there that goes to, to this hole. So I hope that makes sense. Leave a comment if it doesn't, because I understand if this can be confusing. One goes like this, that's for the actual plug-in, and one hole goes like this, and it's for the wires to the plug. Okay, so the next step is that the old cavity is obviously gone. We all know that. This here, I could have removed, you know, but I didn't because we're gonna make a pick guard in the next video. But the issue we're facing right now is that the cables are supposed to be pulled here to a cavity here that doesn't exist. And so we need to drill a new hole. And I'm gonna go this way with a very long drill bit, like this one or actually with this one. And then I'm gonna do the same thing and drill a hole here so that I can pull the bridge pickups wires through here and the neck pickup wires through here and then there. And then I'm gonna drill a tiny hole in the side right here for the bridge connection. If you touch your guitar, chrome par parts and a little bit of hum goes away and sometimes it can even be sounding a little bit like a pop, you most likely have a ground issue. Whenever I've repaired a guitar for someone and that has been the case, that they have those pops it's always been a ground connection or at least like 99 percent of the time it's been the ground connection so we're gonna do that but before i start i just want to say that if you're doing this sort of mod on a guitar that has a glued in neck you can't drill from this direction like this because the neck is in the way but what you can do is you can take off the strap button and you can drill from that end to here and then there. Then you can take a dowel that has the same thickness and that is this long 
and you can just plug that entire hole up. And especially if you buy a towel of hardwood, which most towels are, you can plug that up with some wood glue on and no one will have noticed it. And if you take a size of drill bit that is the same thickness as your strap button, even though I think you should cover it up with paint and stuff like that, it will disappear because the strap button is covering it. And so you could definitely do that. I'm obviously not gonna bother doing it that way because it's kind of silly. I'm gonna move the body over like this and I'm gonna plug this in to my drill and I'm just gonna go like this. And I just drill through this tiny little piece here and then drill through this piece here. And the way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna put this on the body like this and drill. And I might actually put something on here to not scratch the wood, like a piece of metal or something. I have these U bracket pieces of metal that I usually will use. They are just a tube that I've cut uh, on the length to make them into U. And it's perfect, you can put it in there. You can start the drill and the drill will lie on the piece of metal and not scrape the wood. So let's zoom in a little bit and uh, just drill, drill these two holes to begin with. Something like that. Hole goes in there, comes out there, goes in there, and comes out here. So now I'm just gonna move the body over like this so that the cavity is on the opposite side of me. And I'm just gonna line my drill up like this, move it over here, and... and drill out the hole. Super simple and easy. So we've drilled the hole here and a hole here. And now we need to drill a hole here. And if you look really closely, which I don't know if you'll be able to see. Right here, there is actually an old hole. And it's the ground wire that will be connected to the bridge plate. And you need to have this. Different kinds of guitar have these holes in different locations. And you can drill directly to the cavity over here if you wanna. But you could also, if a pickup cavity is close, you can try to drill as close to that. Now, depending on what kind of bridge you have, there are different things. If you have something like a Stratocaster, you will have a claw on the backside, and you will have a ground connection to that claw. If you have a less pole, you will have ferrules that have been plugged in into the body, and you will drill a tiny little cavity there from that inside of that hole. And on a Telecaster like this, you'll drill a tiny little hole like this, just connect like this. So I'm just going to clean this up a little bit. Like so. Because it was filled with paint from when I painted it. And now I can just push a wire through there and get a connection. And I can tug it in and put it in the, along the inside edge. And it will all be good and grounded and connected. So here's the body. The neck is attached. And we're going to start off working on it. I have the old pick guard here. And as you can see, fits nicely, except for up here. And we're gonna keep certain elements of this, and we're gonna have some other things going around and get some new inspiration. This is just basically inspiration and nothing more. If you don't like something that I show you, you don't need to do things exactly like I do. I'm gonna do something that I think looks nice and that I think will fit, and you can do things however you want. And you can do something super simple, like just covering up this part here or just you know a tiny little just double pickguard like this that goes out here and here and is just mirrored like this with not the hole up here maybe but otherwise perfectly just a mirror you could actually even buy two pickguards and cut them in half and put them together and just have a seam in the middle could be really cool you could even make that seem nicer by doing an inlay as well. I'm not gonna do that, at least not in this video. If you think that's a cool idea, maybe I'll 
you know, do it in another video or something, but you could definitely do something like that. Make it simple for yourself, you know. Anyway, so the first thing we're gonna do is we are gonna trace out this pick guard on the piece of wood we have. So here's the piece of wood, and here I have my tracing knives. I have a video where I tell you about them in more detail. It's a guitar builder's life hack video. So if you're interested in you can watch them. But basically all there are are knives that only have one edge. So they're flat on one side and they have a bevel here. And I have one for cutting with my left hand and I have one for cutting with my right hand. And it's just a matter of how the blade moves because the flat side is towards what you're tracing. So we're gonna start off by putting our pick guard down and I'm gonna hold it in place and I'm gonna take a knife and I'm gonna take the knife that I need to trace and I'm just gonna cut into the wood and by cutting with a knife that has only bevel on one side I will get a close connection that is perfect, a mirror. I don't have to think about things like the thickness of the pen I'm using and what did that do to the transfer I just have to think about the actual shape and here when I hold the knife here all of a sudden the blade is on the wrong side because I'm move, flipping it around and so I have to just come back like this and here when I'm going here you can see the edge is on the wrong side again so I have to move back and so it's really good to have this knife, and then here I have to move it again, because to whatever it is you're tracing, the back needs to be. So now we can move this away, and I don't know if you can see the lines in the material, but I have cut, or cut a... I've made a line here that matches this, and I've made a line here that matches this. And now I'm just going to do it again, but I'm going to flip pick guard over, and I'm going to match it up to what I've already made. And now I can just keep tracing, and I'll trace this horn out here. And the reason why I want to do this first is because I want to make this neck pocket here and I want to make this bridge pocket here so that I can freestyle the rest of the pickguard. So I'm going to cut this out and I'm going to cut this out real quick and then I'll be back. Okay, so I'm back here with the pickguard now and I've cut a sleeve in like this for where the bridge go. And it's just a copy of the pickguard. So they match up pretty well. I've also cut up out the beginning of the horns and the neck pocket and it's just because these measurements right here are the ones that I feel are relevant to the design of the guitar. This is where things need to match up. How things move in this direction is what we're going to talk about now and what we're going to work on. It's going to be a little bit hard for you to see when I've drawn in lines, but hopefully you'll get somewhat of an idea of what I'm doing. And I'm going to show you how I did all the cutting out of this when I do the other parts, it's just that you don't need to see all of it. The only thing you need to know is I took extra care and extra long time cutting out these particular shapes just because that's where things are gonna have to be perfect in their matching up with the body. So let's put this on the body and see what happens. Also, you can see some white dots in the pickguard here. I had to put in some acrylic fillers to make the wood a little bit stronger because this is a very thin piece of wood. You're not going to have to do that if you have really hard wood or if you're using plastic or metal or anything like that. But this is very soft and brittle uh, wood. So here is the body and hopefully you can see, you're going to be get better picture later on. So you can see like hor the ho upper horn here for example where I've spent most of my time. It fits really nicely there. and. The neck pocket looks really nice. I'm going to put the bridge on just so I can do some measurements and see how things look. And basically now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to find a way to make the shapes. For example, I don't 
feel like I need pick card right here. A very fine point pen and I'm just going to draw out and I like to draw very softly so that I can easily erase it. I'm going to try to find a way to move this line here in a bit. So I can move this in a bit and then maybe move it in, break the angle a little bit, move it back again and again and again. Somewhere around here, a little round off screw and an organic flowing shape. And I know I did that really quickly and some of you might be like, I don't understand what you did, but I'm basically trying to see movements in the guitar. This horn has a line that goes down like this. And I'm trying to soften it up, not just making a completely straight, like dead line, because everything is very smooth and organic and every line here flows. So I'm trying to make this float a little bit. If I were gonna make the pick guard go to the back of here, I might have actually gone something like this, you know, just to to try to prove my point or whatever. So by thinning it out up here and just breaking that a little bit so that it feels almost like the lines are veeing out from each other like this, I can create a sense of movement or something. And I can use um, my triangle here. I don't know why I don't. I have forgotten all words to make a mark here so that I can be like, okay, parallel to there is that. So I can move on making something else. I'm just gonna finalize this line a little bit and then we'll move on to drawing the end down here. So I'll be back in five seconds when I've looked at this for a couple of minutes and then decided how I want things. Okay, so I'm back. Here is the guitar with the pick card on, and this is the way it looks right now. I redefined and shaped this side here, and I've rounded it over and made somewhat of a natural cut. I've also made a cut here. I had this idea that I would be inspired by a Telecaster thin line, and also a little bit of a Stratocaster and try to find a way of make this look older than it actually is. Just because we're supposed to be making a pickguard for a 1963 Telecaster. And so maybe working from those specs, we can get somewhere. We have to keep the theme of this line going. So I can hold this up to this and I can clamp it into place with my hand like this and I can see that here would be the line to go through and now I can start working on how I would want this pick card to look and I'm gonna take it off the body and hold it like this for a bit and basically what I'm gonna do I'm gonna try to make this look a bit like a Telecaster thin line pick card down here and see if I can match things up a little bit. So just draw in a couple of lines. Hmm. Like something like that, maybe, I don't really know. Um, feels a little bit too much that way but then again we have to think about where we put things so I think I'm gonna move this back a little bit maybe have this line go down a little bit more so it feels a little bit more try to look at the pick guard hold it up to yourself this is what it looks like right now and just Try to visualize the flow of things, and how they look and how they move. Like for example, this line here doesn't work too well with this line here now. So maybe I'll, I'll have to like, you know. But also this line here goes well together there. This is how I work when I design a guitar. I try to see lines, I try to see where one curve goes into another and find symmetry, even if it's not symmetrical. And it might seem 
strange and weird. I really want things to look like they're where they're supposed to be. So I try to figure out, and I think I have to, if I'm gonna keep this going like this, I feel like here we have a little bit of an issue. Maybe I should go up. I don't know. I think this line here needs to be pushed up a little bit. Okay, so after redrawing some lines and measuring some and looking at the pickguard and then looking at it on the guitar and going back and forth for a while to make sure I'm perfectly happy, this is what I'm gonna cut out now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my special blades that I showed you in one of my Guitar Builder's life hack. And the reason why is because they're super fine toothed and so I will be able to cut some of this out without any wood splinters. I'm gonna cut about maybe two millimeters away from the lines I've drawn. And the reason why is because this is very thin and it will very easily break. And so I'm gonna do my very best to cut far away. And then we're gonna move on to the next step and I'm gonna film some more. So first off, we're gonna plug it into this. I'm gonna put on air protection and just cut away a little bit of wood. And, and when I move the blade this way, the fibers of the wood are going that way, and so it won't chip out. So I can get a little bit closer to the line, but if I were to cut this way, I would have to be extra careful not to have any chip outs. And I would most likely take a knife and carve in a line for chip outs to break at. Let's cut this piece out though. Okay, so here's the pick guard. Now a rough cut out. We're gonna clean up these lines and I'm gonna do it on my orbital sander. I'm gonna film that to show you just a little bit of how I do it. And then we're gonna move on to the next step. But just so you know, there are other tools you can use. For example, you can use files and sandpaper and you can slowly move up to the lines that you're gonna cut out. You don't need to have every tool that I have just to be able to build guitars. Some tools are unnecessary, but they make things go very fast. And so you can, you know, get more done, basically. And an orbital sander is one of those things. It makes some of the steps in building guitars a little bit easier. And so if you're planning on making more than one guitar, I would recommend getting one. They're also a lot of fun to work with. So let's just move over to the orbital sander and see what happens. So now I have to decide where I want to have the holes. I was actually about to forget it, but I think I'm just going to use this as a template and I'm going to put this somewhere around there maybe. And then I'm just going to take a pen and mark out. Where I want these. Then because this is a little bit off, I'm gonna move it around a little bit. So I'm just gonna push this up a little bit and to the side, something like that, and mark it out. And I think that's gonna look perfectly fine. I have my tone and my volume, and I'll have my three-way switch. And I don't really have to think that much about it because I know that these two, the switch 
and the first tone pot. They are the distance on the plate. I don't really have to think so much more about it than that. The next part is the pickup and I don't know what pickup I'm gonna end up with to be perfectly honest. I might actually end up with a P90 or a humbucker. I have a green Telecaster that is inspired by Johnny Marr. Maybe you've seen the videos. It has a humbucker and I kind of like that. So maybe this guitar will end up with a P90. I don't actually know. I might also just add another pickup back here. We'll see. Nothing is set in stone yet. So now I'm just gonna cut these out. It's gonna be fairly easy. I'm gonna drill a tiny hole there and a tiny hole there. And I'm gonna take a razor blade and I'm just gonna cut and cut and cut and cut. Just go like this until I'm through. These two holes and these two holes, I'm just gonna drill out with drill bits. And the same thing here, I'm just gonna drill the tiny little holes out and then I'm gonna drill two bigger holes here and just cut with a razor blade back and forth until I'm done. And then we'll paint this. So I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so here's the pick guard. I've put it on some paper because I don't wanna mess up my working area. And here I have a wood stain that I'm gonna use. Uh, I'm going with black because the body is white. <laughs> That's basically all there is to it. And I'm just gonna flood it and let it soak in. And uh, as you can see, it's very faint. And so we are gonna have to put on a lot of layers to get the nice black pick guard that I want. And we're just gonna leave this to dry now. And I'll be back real soon with a nicely covered pick guard. Okay, so here's the pick guard right now. What I did was I just painted it with the black stain a couple of times until I got this nice charcoal black finish that I was going for. I could have had lesser and made it more grayish, but I like the idea of the guitar being really white and the pickguard being really black to create a really nice contrast. I then, after it dried, put on a layer of clear coat. I put on a pretty thick layer because I knew it would sink into the wood a lot. And so here we have it right now. And in the spots where it's more shiny is where the lacquer hasn't gone in as deep. But I'm pretty pleased with the way it looks. If we flip it over, it looks like this. And it's not terribly good looking. But it doesn't really matter. Because no one is going to see this side. Here I have shielding tape. And we're gonna put a little bit of that on the back of this. Just because we wanna stop some of the interfering from playing the guitar. So I'm just gonna cut a piece like this and I'm gonna first put one piece here. And so we take off this backing, revealing the adhesive. And then we can just stick it down. And then we take something like, for example, a hammer, which has a nice flat surface. And we just move it across to make sure we get a really nice bond. And here it hangs over the edge a little bit. So we take a razor blade and we cut a little bit on the inside like so, and then we can peel this back, and now it won't be seen from the other side. And we have to do the same thing, cutting away the tape on the pickup cavity, just so that the pickup can go through. We're gonna put a piece here as well, and I'm just holding it up, seeing where is a good place to cut it. And I fold it, I have a mark there, and I'm gonna take my razor blade and I'm just gonna cut it away. 
and I'm removing the back again just like I did on the other piece and I'm sticking it down somewhere like this and then I'm cutting away so that this tiny piece here where it sticks out can be removed so that you don't see anything on the other side and now I'm gonna put this pickguard on the guitar and we'll see what it all looks like when it's all neat and finished I'm gonna go maybe five mil on the inside and just drill a couple of holes so that the screws can hold this pickguard in place and we'll take a look at the guitar so wait a couple of seconds and you'll see hopefully something cool so here's the guitar right now this is the way it looks the body at least the headstock looks the same as always and I am I'm fairly happy with the way it looks to be honest it turned out in my opinion better than expected I really like the sort of rustic look if you will of the pickguard together with the relic guitar body now I understand that some of you are gonna be like why did you relic the body we don't like relic guitars it's ugly with relic guitars and the thing is first of all if you like relic guitars you don't have to apologize for liking relic guitars you're allowed to like whatever you like second of all this was supposed to be Mike Bloomfield's guitar and if you've seen that guitar you know that it's relic and if it's relic by hand or by playing you know it doesn't really matter I went into this as if I was going to actually make a new pick card for him and so I was trying to make something that seemed like it would match it looks kind of weird when you have a guitar that is old looking but all the hardware looks brand new I know the hardware looks brand new on this guitar but that's because I'm gonna switch all these parts out at some point and so I don't really feel like wasting the time on making them look old when I'm not gonna keep them anyway and this is obviously a kit guitar and not an old guitar I wanted to talk a little bit more about that the tuners on this guitar right now are not that great so if the guitar is a little bit out of tune it's because a couple of chords into playing and you need to retune it I can't really do anything about that except changing the tuners out though I'm gonna have to do that later on if you have any cool ideas for tuners I could use let me know the next thing is the bridge if I wanted to make this look even more like a left-handed guitar and not a right-handed guitar made into a left-handed guitar I would switch this out and I'm gonna switch this out I'm gonna switch this out to a bridge that is angled the other way around basically this way but there are a couple of things about that you need to think about and the first thing is when you switch things out usually that will make the guitar behave differently so if you have a guitar you really love it might not be a good idea to switch the bridge out because you might actually you know change the way it feels and sounds the same thing with the nut if you like the nut that is in even though you know that you know it's plastic or something changing it out for bone might not be a good idea if you like what's on the guitar and you feel like it's magic then beware of changing things because they might actually not improve the guitar they might also make the guitar better you know but be careful I don't feel like changing this bridge here could damage this guitar in any way it could only improve it that's because I really dislike this bridge as I've said in my review of this kit I am very sure I could bend this by my by just my hands so yes I'm gonna change the bridge out I'm gonna change all the hardware and the electronics and all that out at some point but it's not relevant to this build if you want to follow up on how I would do those things and what I did later down the line leave a comment below letting me know that you're interested because obviously I don't need a follow-up video to my own guitars I own them but if you're interested in seeing something like that let me know I was also gonna do a carve armrest carve and a belly carve on the back side I have a very simple and easy way to add those to a guitar that are like quick and easy things you can do but I actually like this guitar I've been playing it for a couple of hours now 
And I actually like it, so I don't want to do it to this guitar. So I'm thinking that if you are interested in seeing how to do that quick and easy, I'll do a separate video for that on a different guitar or on a scrap piece of wood. But anyway, I'm going to plug this into my little practice amp here. It's one of those cheap Fender amps that you get when you start out and it's just because I feel like this is so much a starter guitar. I haven't changed anything on this guitar for better parts or anything like that. The only thing I've really added that you couldn't get in the kit was an extra screw uh, for the pickguard because I made a new pickguard. Obviously the pickguard is also a new part. But anyway, I'm going to plug it into this and play it through this so you have sort of a idea of what it sounds like if you're interested and if you also haven't seen the review where I already played it. But nothing should have really changed except I used another amp. So yes, let's plug it into the amp. First I'm going to tune it because it's just me filming this part here. It's already out of tune. And you'll get to hear what it sounds like and get a little bit more close-ups. And hopefully you like the guitar and hopefully you like the video series. Let me know in the comments below what you think and feel about it all. And if you wouldn't mind sharing this with other people that might be interested, I would be very happy if you did. I'm very bad at exposing myself to the networks, so if you help me out, i appreciate it. Anyway, until next time, stay awesome and cool, and go and make a wooden custom pickguard for one of your guitars, because I feel like it's a win.